All right, so for this tutorial, what we're going to do is create a logo and header. Uh, basically, I just want you to make a logo and then have um, some uh, text elements. Um, not text elements. Uh, yeah, text elements. Basically, the, the, the name of your company and like maybe what it does. So typically, you'll see like a Pepsi logo and then Pepsi written on it, you know, and it's, or like Mountain Dew, and then it'll say Do the Do or something or... Uh, you know, usually you'll see something and then well, what's underneath it, like their, their tagline. Okay, so um, that's basically uh, what we're looking for in this assignment, as well as I'm going to also include um, a part that's going to include the interactivity part. So let's get started. So you're going to open up InDesign, um, and what you're going to do is just, uh, we can choose one of these presets, and we actually are going to use letter, but just for the sake of, of educational purposes, let's just do new file so I can just explain what the things are. So uh, by default, it's underneath PICAs. There's a thing called points and PICAs. They're basically just a measuring system that graphic designers used back in the day. Um, just go ahead and use inches because I, I don't even remember what the sizes of those are. There's special rulers that have them. Um, okay, and uh, you probably have facing pages on. I'm going to turn that off for now because um, we don't really want that for what we're making. Uh, pages, uh, we'll just start with one page. It's fine. We'll have just a single column. Um, that's also fine. And then uh, you'll see margins versus two half inch margins. Uh, do not worry about bleed and slug. Basically, the idea with bleed and slug is that you would make your page go beyond the uh, the page because, like, if you open a magazine, right, there isn't a white border around the outside edge of it because they they actually print it larger than what you see, and then they cut off the white border because you can't print all the way to the edge. It's not really a possible thing. Okay, so we'll go ahead and hit create, and it will take a second. All right, fabuloso. So let's put that back there. All right, so um, now when you come up with your design, I highly suggest this, and I highly suggest this for basically um, any uh, artistic endeavor that you make that is going to be digital. It is best to work analog first, meaning work like on paper, sketch out a bunch of ideas, just sitting there while you're doodling, watching TV or outside at the park or whatever, um, or while you're waiting to go to an appointment. Just grab a pa uh, pad and just sketch out a whole bunch of ideas, just almost like stream of thought, one idea after another after another, okay? Um, the reason why that's better is that if you try to draw directly to the computer, you'll find that it influences your, your style. If you instead decide to make the sketches first, um, it's just you and a piece of paper. All right. Uh, it's also a lot more fluid. You can come up with ideas a lot quicker. Um, that's why I like drawing and sketching is so important. So I already did this. Uh, so I'm just going to bring that in as kind of a guide. So we'll just do um, file um, place. And then uh, it's in my downloads, and here's my picture right here, and I will place, and I'm just going to click it here, and you can see it's rather large. So I'm going to control minus, minus, minus. Uh, I'm just going to bring this up, and then if I grab just this, you can see it's going to kind of cut it off, which is kind of lame. So what I need to do is if I hold control, it will actually do, you can see it, it will grab it, it will do the outside frame as well move, as move in the inside frame but it won't be proportionate. So I have to have control and I have to hold shift. That keeps it proportionate. So I'm just going to go like that. And I'm just going to put it up there and then we'll just kind of pull it like that. Okay. And I'm just going to control plus plus. Okay. So now that's there. That looks fine. You can see the quality of it is kind of crummy. So uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to turn this too because I drew it sideways and we'll just scale it so it fits in here. Okay, we'll just go like that. Okay, so you'll notice the quality is kind of, kind of crummy. There are some ways around it, but if you want to just make one individual element uh, a little bit easier to see, you can just right-click on it, and then you go to display performance, and I am just going to do high-quality display, and that's just going to make it so it actually appears uh, visually the uh, you know at, at the actual resolution that it, it should be. Okay, so now we have that in there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use layers, though. So if we go up here, this is the layers panel. You don't see it here. Just go windows, layers. Okay, so all these panels and stuff can all be accessed through windows like you typically would expect. If for some reason you're lame -o and you're like, oh, no, I got rid of it. I can't have it. Just go to windows and just go to workspace and just do reset essentials. Make sure you're on essentials for now. Reset essentials, and then uh, it should reset everything back to the way it was. Uh, in this case, actually, it took it away from me. Why do you take these away? So we'll just do it this way. Layers. Okay. 
So I'm just going to use layers, and you'll see that right now I have, and the layers work kind of like they would inside of Photoshop, um, but they're actually, I would say, more similar to folders, where you actually have your elements inside of each layer. So like I'd have multiple drawings, and they'd all be inside of this layer one, okay? I'm just going to rename this. I'm going to double click on it, and we'll just call it um, ref image, okay? Um, and I'm going to go ahead and lock it. And that way I can't accidentally do anything. See how it says uh, my thing has a little no smoking and the pencil on there. So now I cannot change that. If I need to, I could just unlock it and then make my changes. Uh, but that way, like I can draw over top of it without accidentally moving it around and stuff. So you can see I did a bunch of sketches here. Uh, to be frank, if this was something I was going to spend a whole, like something I was actually going to use or making for a client, I would have like 10 times this number at least. Okay. So you should have like uh, around 50 sketches, I would say. Anyway, um, so I have that for reference. I'm going to make a new layer by clicking on this. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll call this one um, the text. Okay. And I'll make another layer. And I'm going to call this one the logo. And we'll just start with that. So I'm going to turn the logo one off. And we're just going to go do the text one first. Okay. So um, looking at my icons here, uh, my logos that I was looking at, um, because I was thinking of something I would do for like my Teach Me Comb site, which I use this kind of guy character thing here. If you've ever noticed, it's up on the top and it's in some of the other things. I just use it. It's kind of my brand. Uh, makes things a little bit easier. Uh, I decided once I kind of got into like this area, I decided I kind of like this circle thing um, and using the negative shape to sort of define what the uh, what it would actually look like. So I'm going to use that as my logo. Um, but even before we do that, let's just go ahead because sometimes it will influence your design is uh, finding your text that you want to use for your um, your logo. So, okay, so we want to put the text in here. Um, this actually might be, I mean, you might want to have it up for reference. You might not. I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off so it's not in the way. Uh, so we're just going to use our type tool here. I'm going to grab my type tool. And I'm just going to click and draw a little box. And then we're going to put our text in here. OK, so I'm just going to go ahead and you'll see that the properties panel will basically whatever tool you're using. Um, there used to be a tool panel, like a toolbar toolbar on, on the top, much like Photoshop. Now they just use everything right through that that um, that panel, the uh, properties panel instead. OK, so you can see there's quite a bit of options as far as um, the uh, the stuff here. OK, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to put this up here. I'm going to um, I'm going to go ahead and change the size to something that's a little bit easier to see. So we'll try 36. Um, and I'm going to make mine, um, uh, I guess my sites, uh, teach me cone, right? So I guess we'll just do that. So we'll do teach, teach me cone. All right. So that's going to be the title, uh, and that looks acceptable. So what I'm going to do next is this. So I'm going to click off. Now you'll notice that this box is bigger than that. If you go down to the corner and this will work with images as well. If you, cause you can see, I can make this bigger or smaller. Um, and you'll see it'll text wrap. Um, but if I go down here, and if I double click on this corner, it will automatically size it to the, um, the size of the text itself. Okay. I'm actually going to make it a little bit bigger though, because some of the typefaces might be a little bit larger. So what we're going to do is, uh, I just kind of clicked off and I clicked back on it with the, uh, the selection tool. Now what you can do is I'm just going to go down here and, uh, let's see, let's just click on this and we'll start at the very top. Okay, and we will just basically, okay, cool, thanks. Um, we will just go down the line and we will look for a typeface that we, that I think looks acceptable. Okay, so um, it could be any number of things like that one looks fine. Let's go with that one, right? So I'm just going to kind of click off. I'm gonna be like, okay, that one looks okay. Now what I might want to do and what I would highly suggest is that I usually make a whole bunch of these. So I'll hold alt and I'll click and I'll drag. Like that. It's the same thing as doing Control C, Control V, or Command C, Command V. Um, but if you just hold Alt, you can just drag it. It's just easier. I'm gonna take this one, and then I'll click on this, and then I'll go down arrow again, and I'll just keep going down the line and look for ones that I think would, uh, you know, look good for what I'm trying to do. Um, you know, you have to take into account what kind of. Um, uh, nah, that one's a little too. Um, what kind of uh, your style, what you're looking for it to look like. Um, I mean, that might work because it kind of looks like a chalkboard, I guess. So the other thing to do is, uh, and I would even highly suggest this, is instead of doing any of that, use a, a website like Defont. And then you can just look up 
uh, fonts in here and download them much like we did in the previous tutorial. So you just download them, install them and kind of go from there. I kind of like this one, actually. Let's just use this one. Toonie Sans. All right. And then I'm just going to open type font file. Why are there two of them? Uh, personal use sans. Oh, italic. I don't need the italic one. So I'm just going to click, double click on it, hit install. It's the same process. If it's a Mac, just double click on it. You'll see it'll be on the bottom and you'll see install. It takes a half a second for it to, to show up. I think that installed. Okay. So let's go back in here. Uh, but I would look up a bunch of fonts, find ones that I think would work. And then I would, um, I would use that. So I think it was this one, Toonie Sans. Okay. Fabulous. Now, once I have that, the next thing I will do is I will look to do my strap line or tag line. It's a really common way of saying it. So if you remember, mine is just teach me. That's actually shorter than my thing here. So I'm just going to go and I'm going to draw another one, another little box here. And I'm just going to write, you know, um, teach me. One, two, three. We'll make it like that. Okay. So now, generally speaking, when we do our typefaces, we want to have a, a heading font and a body font. So the heading font is our font that is visually interesting. And our um, our uh, body font is less visually interesting, but it's more uh, easily read. Okay. So since my media, um, is, and, and typically for bodies of text, easy reading, um, because a lot of the, the strap line we can also use for our body font. Um, a lot of um, my my stuff is mostly going to be viewed online. So for me, I'm going to probably try to use something that's more of a, a sans serif uh, as opposed to something that is serif like this. So I just go down the line and oops, see, I got to click off because I was still on the text tool. Click back on it. OK, and then uh, click here and then I'll just hit the down arrow until I find something that that works for me. So. Uh, I don't want anything too fancy. It just needs to be legible. We'll go with that one. Okay. Imagine uh, I spent a whole lot more time on this, but we'll just call that good. Uh, I did like this font, but I actually think I like this one better because I like the idea of it having the camel case, which is basically you capitalize the first letter, except for the first, the first letter of each word, except for the, the first word. Um, but in my case, I'm just going to keep it up there. I kind of like these two better. I don't know which one I want to go with. Um, I think this one's a little bit cleaner. So I think I'm gonna go with that one. So um, what I'll do is I'll just like put these next to each other and I'll do a whole list of these and see which ones look better. Um, so you do a whole bunch of them and just find your two typefaces that you're that you're going to want to use for your work. Right. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with this one and this one. I'm going with my first one. Uh, we'll go ahead and delete those. OK, now what I want to do is I just want to line these up. So I'm going to do that thing I did before where I'm going to click on it, double click on this. Right. And I'll put this here. I'm going to click on this, double click on this. I'm going to put this down here. Now I got to think about sizing and um, my other aspects here. So let's actually make this a bit bigger. This is obviously too small. So let's go down to the typeface and let's try 24 and let's just stretch this guy out. Um, that feels too large in comparison. So let's try doing 18. That'll work. Okay. So I'm going to double click it here. And um, so now what I want to do is I need to play around with my typefaces in order to uh, make it read a little bit better. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, let's just play around with the first one here. So I have teach me cone. All right. So what we can do is that if you look over here on the properties, there's these other options. So we haven't really played around too much with typefaces beyond just typing things out. So some of them you already know. So like, this is obviously the, um, the size of it, right? So it's in points. Remember we're talking about points and pikas, uh, this is combo. Um, some of these other things here, this one deals with the kerning. So basically the um, right now it's on automatic. If we switch to opt, uh, let me see. Oh, can I not? Oh, I guess I got to do it on per on per thing. Um, this is the uh, vertical scale. So if you want it to be taller, you can do it that way. Um, uh, I don't. I'm going to leave it back to normal. Um, this is what's we'll say baseline shift. Uh, that will shift the text up and down. This is the baseline right here. Uh, that could be useful if you. Um, I'm trying to spread things. This is line height. This is probably more what you would use or letting. Sorry. Um, this is also called line height. But letting basically if if I had this on, if I had two lines, that would be the space between them. But I only have one. There's only one line. So if there's a second line, basically it's the gap between the each line. Um, this is going to be tracking. Yep. Okay. So the tracking is going to spread the text and not spread the text. So if I go up, it'll spread it out. If I go this way, it'll um, bring it in. 
So you might find that you might need to shift generally it farther and closer together, depending on what you want your look to be. So for me, I am going to do one. So see the little plus? That means that all the not all the text is fitting. I'm going to double click on that. That wasn't beneficial like that. Okay, now we'll double click. There we go. Um, that's when you see the little plus, it means there's more text in that text box. Uh, what does this one say? This one is horizontal scale, same as the vertical scale. And then we don't really care about it's. I don't think it's called italics. It's skew. Yeah, it's different than italics. Okay, um, so we can play around with those. But what I want to do uh, show you is actually this one. This one's kerning, but this is a per character. Where tracking will spread the entirety of it, kerning will spread will will um, will put the gap between each letter. So for instance, I got to double click. I click in here. Let's. So if you look, this E could be a little bit tighter here. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to take the kerning. Now watch. If I click like this. It's going to pull that E closer. If I go up, it'll put the E farther away. I'm actually going to go ahead and try to make it a little bit tighter. Okay. Then I'm going to go here and actually put a little bit larger of a gap. And then we'll go here and put a little bit larger of a gap. Just to help the separation. Oh, that was the wrong one. I meant to do this. And we'll put in two more here too. Uh, where are you? Kearney. There we go. Um, just to help with the separation, I do want them to be a single word, but I kind of wanted it to, um, have a little bit more separation, like between this O and the C, I feel like that could be closer. So I'll kind of put this in here. Now I wouldn't go through and do a whole big paragraph of text like that. Um, this could probably be a little bit closer, but you know, for something where it's the, your logo, it might be worth like putting the extra effort in to get the, the heading to to make sure that like you have it tight where you want it tight and less tight where you want it less tight. So I'm going to click off here. I'm going to click on this one and this one's tracking is way too high to me. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to lower that one. So it's a little bit tighter. Um, that looks a little bit better. Okay. So um, you can make some adjustments, like I said, here using these things. Um, yeah. All right. So now what I want to worry myself with is being the alignment here. All right. So we have to make some decisions. I'm going to have probably the logo on the left and then have this stuff over here. Generally speaking, the worst type of alignment is the um, center alignment. This doesn't look very good. You're actually much better off just doing um, either left alignment or doing right alignment. So this isn't right aligned, this object. So if we went like that, that would make it more. Is this? Let me double click, make sure. Yeah. Yeah. But it's very important that we have our, our, our elements lined up. So I think I'll go with right alignment. Uh, we'll just start with that and see what kind of happens. Um, so another thing that you might want to do, because um, this could be kind of fun, is let's say that you want to take the um, the T here and I want it to like go around this, right? Um, I don't really want to do that, but let's say that was something I wanted to do. So what I can do um, is uh, something with that. Uh, but I'm going to do that in the next video because that'll actually be useful uh, if, for creating the logo, but we'll say that this is good as far as my text is concerned. Um, and then the next video, we'll start working on the logo aspect.